<laughs> Hello, everybody. Our next speaker is Stephen Fanuken with the mailing list Welcome CI. Please give him a warm welcome. Morning, everyone. Everyone can hear me okay? Still? Perfect. So, I'm Seem Fanuken, a developer from Ireland working on OpenStack predominantly. I worked on Open vSwitch previously at my last employer, Intel. And when I was working on Open vSwitch, we saw a kind of a pretty common problem with uh, some of the work that we were planning on doing. So, when we were in Intel, uh, Intel has this uh, DPDK data path as part of Open vSwitch. And the DPDK data path isn't really the, it's not the main way of using Open vSwitch. So Intel has a lot of focus on it and it's a lot of use in telco and NFV applications. But because it wasn't the main data path in there, we saw a lot of problems where people were submitting patches to upstream Open vSwitch. And those patches were killing functionality with uh, the DPDK data path. And this is a, a pretty common problem with uh, free open source projects. Open source projects really, really like using mailing lists. The Linux kernel is based on a mailing list. Patchwork itself, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, is based on a mailing list. And uh, in this case, Open vSwitch was based on a mailing list. And the problem is that mailing lists don't work very well with tools like Jenkins and Travis and BuildBot and insert random build automation tool here. So we set out about 18 months or two years ago to, uh, to try and remedy that problem. We spotted that there was this tool called Patchwork, which actually does work very well with the mailing list. Uh, I'll go into a bit of detail about what Patchwork is for anyone that's not familiar with it in a moment. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to take Patchwork and we wanted to be able to hook it into Jenkins and uh, provide a way to use Jenkins or BuildBot or whatever to automatically test the patches that come into our mailing list and continually test them and make sure that they don't regress anything that's already in the code base. Um, and basically do all the good stuff that we're able to get using GitHub and Garrett and other tools like that. So Patchwork uh, is this uh, tool that takes a mailing list and puts it into a nice, pretty web UI that lets you do a couple of cool things with that mailing list, with patches on that mailing list. So, you can do stuff, you can, uh, you can track reviewers or delegates in patchwork terminology. You can bundle patches up and download the inbox files of an entire series of patches. Uh, you can keep track of the state of a patch as it works with the, whatever your internal workflow is as you review it, as you test it, whatever you need to do with your patches. And it, it works pretty well. So we had a look at this and we spotted there was a, a couple of small changes we could make that might actually allow this to hook us into Jenkins. So there's four main features that we've been working on. Um, in the original uh, summary for this presentation, I said that these were all going to be included in Patchwork 2.0. Unfortunately, life has a way of getting uh, in between you and your development time. So three of these things are merged upstream. The final one, I'll, the last one at the end, is still in development. I hope to get that finished in the next month or so, and that should make the 2.0 release complete. The first of these features is uh, the REST API. So Patchwork came with this uh, XML RPC API, which has been around since Patchwork was first developed in about 2008. It works pretty well. Um, XML RPC has kind of gone by the wayside. REST, RESTful APIs are the new black as far as uh, web apps go. So we said, right, we'll keep the XML RPC API, but we'll expose this new RESTful API. And everything that Patchwork knows, we're going to expose that through this REST API. So that's patches, that's bundles, that's users, people, projects, the whole thing. Uh, and that's built on uh, Django REST framework, which is possibly one of the nicest libraries I've ever had the pleasure of working with. The next thing, the thing that's probably taken the most time to work on has been uh, series support. So for anyone here that's familiar with uh, the mailing list workflow, a series is a, a collection of patches uh, that 
exactly like a, a series of commits and get in git you need to apply the patches in order uh, in order to build uh, a logical feature or bug fix or whatever you need to do so at the, it, historically patchwork hasn't supported series it supported bundles which kind of equate to the same thing but bundles have to be done manually so someone has to go in and take a collection of patches and throw them into a bundle we wanted that to be automatic so series support is uh, is part of the upstream patchwork at the moment uh, it exposes patches it also extends patchwork's ability to track other types of mails in this case cover letters so uh, a cover letter is a a message that comes before a series that gives you information about what the series is intended to do, gives you a big picture view. So this will also uh, track cover letters for you and it will keep track of things like have I received all of the patches that have come in off that should have been submitted to the mailing list. So if the mailing list has dropped two patches out of a 10 patch series, you're able to see this both through the web UI and through the REST API. Uh, as an extension to this, you're able to download patches uh, and patch mboxes. We wanted to make it possible to download the uh, mbox for an entire series. And for the sake of testing, we wanted to be able to download a patch, regardless of where it was in the series, with all its dependencies. So if you had a 10 patch series, we wanted to test patch five, which meant you need to download the first four patches. Uh, so you could apply those uh, and make sure that the fifth one applied cleanly. This is the first of the things that's still work in progress. There's patches up on this, on the patchwork mailing list at the moment, going through review. Uh, I hope to get that merged in the next few weeks. The next thing, this is a thing that's currently being used by a couple of projects. I know DPDK are using it, um, and I'm hoping to start using it for Open vSwitch in the near future. Checks are simply a way of keeping track of the test results from a, a given test or build that you run. So we wanted a way of uh, exposing this information to, the, to Jenkins so that we could actually go and test something, but we also wanted a way of reporting that information back to Patchwork so someone could go in and get a one-stop uh, snapshot view of the current state of a patch. So not only are you able to see who's currently reviewing your patch uh, and what state it is through the review pipeline, but you're also able to see um, is that patch test uh, passing uh, so many tests? So if you have three different guys running tests, are all those guys happy with said patch? This is up there at the moment, and it's exposed through the REST API, and it's also exposed through the legacy XML RPC API, which I'm pretty sure is how DPDK are um, using this functionality at the moment. The final one, the one that's taken... Uh, that's kept me up late at night for the last couple of weeks has been uh, events. So events, this is based on uh, actually how GitHub do events in their API. I figured that why reinvent the wheel? Events will keep track of uh, lifecycle events and different elements that Patchwork tracks. So if there's a, a new bundle created, if a patch is created, crucially, if a patch is created and then all of its dependencies uh, are met, i.e patch number five in a series if the first four patches have been received, events will be raised for this and they provide a quick and easy way of downloading uh, the patch and then your series for those kind of events. This is pretty crucial when it comes to CI because it gives you a, an automated way of, uh, of figuring out what it is that is available for testing. So how do you actually go about using all this functionality? This is, I put together a little bit of a demo. I'm not going to go into all the, the detail on it here. I have a, a blog post which uh, I should be publishing this evening uh, on my website where you can find the actual specific commands you can run. But uh, how would you go about tying Patchwork into, in, in this case, Jenkins? So it's not that difficult. So starting off anyway, Patchwork receives patches from a mailing list and it fires events. So remember now, events is still in development, so the, any of the examples I show might change in the next week or two. But it'll fire a, a patch complete or a patch dependencies met uh, event, which you have some little script running somewhere, it's able to pull in those patches and it's able to build your job request, which is gonna submit to Jenkins. Jenkins takes that 
that job request. Um, important step here, it submits a check back to Patchwork say in the pending state, say uh, that I'm about to kick off a test, the test is in the pending state, which provides users with uh, visibility about uh, whether their CI system is running and then what kind of CI or what kind of tests are actually run, expected to run against that patch. Jenkins in this case uh, pulls in the patch, runs all of its tests and uh, gets its end result, whether that's a success or a failure or a warning. And then it pushes that result straight back up to Patchwork. That Information then is visible for users. You provide a URL where they can go and get more information. So if you have build artifacts, provide a URL where users can find all those build artifacts, give a brief description, uh, and of course the actual test status. So there's, I'm aware of, there's a couple of tools that are already using uh, variants of that API. Snowpatch is one that I'm aware of. Uh, the demo that I built used plain old bash scripts because they were nice and hacky and I was able to do it in a couple of hours. Uh, but hopefully we'd build upon that in time. How we're actually planning on building upon that, the first thing is to merge all of the patches that are currently sitting in the mailing list. So finish events, finish the ability to download series inboxes, uh, and document everything to the eyeballs if we can. In addition, there isn't really any reason in that workflow to keep a script around is possible for Jenkins to actually do this itself by way of a Jenkins plugin or something similar. And there's also no reason to actually use Jenkins. I use that, use that because it was the lowest common denominator, but uh, from, coming from OpenStack, Zool is pretty much like the bee's knees of uh, testing automation tools. If I can find a way of hooking Zool into, uh, into Patchwork, then that's something that I definitely like to, to do to bring in all the uh, different advantages that Zool offers. So that's a very brief overview of the kind of stuff that's coming down the pipeline for Patchwork 2.0. This, the first place you're probably going to find this would be uh, the Oslabs instance, which is uh, it's used for Open vSwitch uh, and a good few uh, other Linux kernel projects. And I'm hoping to get the, uh, the data plane development kit guys on board with this as well and get automated testing going there. More information available on the website, on the Git repo, and of course, on the mailing list is probably the best place to find all of this. So I've been Stephen Fanukan. Um, I'm happy to take any questions that anyone might have. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Stephen. So we have two minutes if there's any questions. Don't be shy. Uh, first of all, thanks for, for the talk. Uh, this is something I was thinking about for the last couple of weeks because I was going to write some sort of integration on, between Jenkins and Patchwork. And this helps um, to, clear, well, to make this idea about this a bit cl uh, more clear because uh, so, um, I was reading the documentation for Patchwork and some things were missing. For, mm -hmm. And you basically describe those things. I think I will contribute some patches for the documentation so that th uh, this, yeah. this bit is covered. Um, um, the one question, are you planning to write a Jenkins plugin for this or is it something so, that's... So I started a couple of weeks back. I, uh, I spent about two days trying to install NetBeans, which I hadn't used since college and unfortunately isn't packaged on Fedora. Uh, and that pretty much took all the energy that I had to go and write Java code again. So at some point in the next few months, uh, a Jenkins plugin would be my ideal target. If I can't get a Jenkins plugin going, I might try BuildBoss or something, because that's Python based. Um, but yeah. Uh, one question, uh, this uh, REST API, does it set any relevant HTTP uh, headers so that, uh, like, um, um, is it e-tag or modified time, something like this? Last modified, so that no. a script, no? No, not yet. So <coughs> there's, there's two big optimizations needed for the mm -hmm. REST API. The first one is e-tags, so it can actually, you don't need to make requests to the server every time. The second one is 
if we go back to the actual REST API body, you'll see, uh, so for example, there's a patch in a series there. I want the ability to uh, expand that patch and series inline, so I, again, I don't need to make two additional requests to the server. But I need to get 2.0 out. After 2.0 is out, then maybe that, that's an optimization for 2.1. I'm afraid the time is up. You have to continue talk outside. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Stephen. Good.